John Lovell, we're gonna do an EDC pocket dump. So we're getting ready to do an interview. We're gonna get your life story, which I have not heard. Mm. And uh, a lot of people want it, but I always like to do these as a quick warm up, and the audience loves this. So what is your everyday carry pocket dump? Got it. So people want the blaster, they start with blaster, right? So I carry appendix. Uh, if I'm going like out and about, like downtown Atlanta or something like that, I'll carry a more like full size gun. But this is the Shadow System CR920, the War Poet Edition. Uh, so pretty cool, pretty snazzy. Nice. Uh, little holster. So, I mean, subcompact guns, I'm liking them more and more. What do you think of that red dot? I love the red dot. You do? Yeah, I do. What did, about how long you? did it take you to get used to that thing? Um, it, it There was definitely a learning curve. Uh, folks who really haven't trained their draw and presentation to be really meticulous and repeatable struggle to pick up the red dot. And a lot of times people are fudging their number two where they're either bowling up or they're fishing down into mm -hmm. a presentation rather than a straight up. And so if your presentation is perfect, you'll see a red dot every time. And so I never, ever, ever draw, no matter how fast, and fail to pick up that red dot. And so it's a win for me. Uh, but some folks n never really uh, did that type of training. And so, or they've got something goofy going on that they're not aware of. And so it can definitely be a liability. A lot of times people will get a red dot and they'll think, oh, that's going to be great. And then they come up and don't see anything. They have to adjust, adjust. Where is it? Where is it? And then they're, and they'll get frustrated. So they're real excited when they get it. And then they're real excited to ditch it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Uh, it took me a while to get used to it. Yeah. Just being honest, it yeah. took me a while to get used to it. So uh, I love it. it. Allows me to threat focus, and that's a really, really big deal. There's all kinds of cons to having uh, a red dot on it, but uh, for uh, it's the future of professional pistol application for sure. Yeah. If you're not like really into shooting, I highly recommend you not getting a red dot. If you're going to go down that path, you know somebody out there, then it can be a really big win. But do you shoot pistol on night vision? Uh, I mean. Yeah, sure. Do you? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, that's, you know. And Red Dot is yep. amazing for that. That's the one thing that really kind of switched my mindset mm. to it. I was like, all right, I talked to somebody else about that, and they brought up a story about using it on nods in a mm. real situation. And I was like, mm. okay, I get it. Mm. Now I get it. But It's possible to shoot your tritium dots, which sounds incredible. It's like, no way. You can, but it, it sucks. It's not very intuitive. It takes some training, and when you got a whole bunch of ambient lighting around you, uh, it, it, it can be extremely challenging. Red dot, by far, way to go. So, right on, right on. Uh, on with the pocket dump. Let's keep going. Uh, knife, it is dirty because it is used. So this is our Fox folder. Um, so You designed that, right? Uh, no. Uh -uh. We... Uh, branded it and stuff and, and we changed some stuff but this is an old design by fox italy and oh okay so uh anyway yeah there's been variations uh over the years but th this is our adaptation so this is kind of like the, the the final thing but allows you to uh even if you don't know like a screama salat kali knife fighting stuff you grab something like this which functions a little bit more like a punch dagger uh you're able to just keep someone at distance in box and man the, the, the angle uh, you could punch through a car door with this so really really nasty uh, for fighting a and it's just a good box opener it's a good work knife so uh, I like this guy uh, normally I have a like tactical pin on me as well I fly a lot uh, that's not on because I gave it away at the airport uh, recently so um and then a stiletto flashlight uh, I always carry medical as well but uh, I have my EDC pack, and that's got all my stuff. If I didn't have that with me, I'd have, like, an ankle medical kit on. Okay. What's in your ankle medical kit? Uh, tourniquet. Uh, I've got a couple chest seals, uh, gauze. Uh, I, I jettisoned, uh, you know, kind of like a wrap to complete the pressure dressing just because it was too bulky. Uh, you know, you don't want the flared-out cankle. Yeah. You know, so— um, I ditched a good bit of stuff. Then I have like a passport card, some cash, a lock pick set. Uh, that's kind of in there. So, how much cash do you carry on you? Just curious for emergency situations. Three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks. Yeah, and that that's not like a hard fat 
I didn't think about that much. Just yeah. I always have at least three hundred ish bucks on me. Yeah. Till my wife cleans me out. <laughs> Does that take long? Nope, nope. But she's got those eyelashes. She bats at me. I don't have much of a chance against it, you know. So no. Well. I told, I have a friend over at SIG, his name's Jason, and he was ecstatic that you're coming on here, and he wanted me to present you with something. Oh, sweet. So that is, that's the latest and greatest SIG P365, 17 rounds plus one in the pipe, oh. so 18. It's got the ported barrel, helps with muzzle flip. They got that optic, which actually I think they came out with a new optic recently. Yeah, man. Uh, that's an, a major improvement. And um, yeah, he wanted me to show you that. There's a business card in there. And if you call the number on that card, I think that they might send you something very similar, maybe even exactly like that. That's so. awesome. All right, man. Well, I'll do it. It's a right great on. gun. Cool, man. But. Um, John, you're a family man. You have kids, beautiful wife. Do your does your wife carry? She does. Do, yep. She does she everywhere does. she goes. Uh, if I'm with her, she'll slack sometimes, uh, but typically, even when I'm with her, but especially when I'm not, she's carrying. Yeah. How long did it take you to get her to carry everywhere? Hey, quite a while. Something clicked for her. She guns were something that I did. You know, she's interested in that. And slowly over time, I kind of laid out a plan to get her interested in this. I did it because I love her and I want her safe, and I'm just frankly not around a lot. But something clicked once we had kids. You know, my oldest is 11 years old, so, you know, it, this clicked quite a while ago for her. But she realized, all right, if I'm not around and something happens, she's the first line of defense. And so she started caring not because she loved guns or had any affinity for them at all. It's because she really loved her kids and knew ultimately she was going to have to be the one that defended. And so uh, I, I baby stepped her over a couple years into carrying every day. So, um, and that was a process, but. Yeah. Yep, we we went through that process as well, and I it was the it was the exact same thing. We had a kid, and um, and uh, who's a toddler now, and it was I was pretty lenient on it, mm -hmm. especially considering where we live. It's a very safe community, but once we had the kid, it was where's your gun? Yeah, you're the only person that's going to defend our kid. That's right. When I'm not there. That's Make right. sure you have your gun on you. Yeah. You know, and it was a lot of those uncomfortable suggestions, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. to the wife that, uh, but we're good to go now. What, you've been in this space for a long time. You're one of the OG guys teaching and um, getting citizens prepared. And, and uh, what is one of the biggest mistakes that you see people make with their everyday carry or, or, We'll, we'll even go home security, everyday carry, mm. a new concerned citizen that's investing heavily in their training and their prepping. And what, what do you think the biggest mistake that people make is or to, the most common? Mm, to give a real good answer, I'd have to really kind of zero in on what, what that person was starting at and going. But I'd say, hey, adherence to the universal fire and safety rules of like, man, you really got to know how we treat guns is according to systems and protocols so that no accident can befall us. E even right here, you know, knowing my target was beyond the left and the right, not, you know, it, th there's a whole safety protocol that goes along with handling firearms. And so I, I was in a gun shop a few days ago. I was with my son. I was picking up a, a transfer, and some dude is looking at a gun and as I'm coming around the counter, and I'm, I look for it in gun shops. Gun shops make me very uncomfortable because everybody thinks they know guns in a gun shop, and nobody knows guns. Everyone's pointing it everywhere. And as I come closer, he takes a turn and looks at it, and I, I kind of make a lunge and move that gun over, not like some, not like a tool or anything. I'm like, hey, coming through, bro. Uh, and then my son walks, you know, past. But he was literally pointing that gun straight at me and was about to be pointing at my son. Uh, and, and, you know, afterwards, he's like, man, you got to protect the kids. And I'm like, yeah, man, you're right. And we kind of, he was cool. He was chill. But he realized, man, 
he was pointing that gun and he said uh, what I knew he was going to say. He's like, it's not loaded. And I'm like, man, treat all firearms as if they're loaded. And that's all I, I, I said. And I'm like, you know, and I, so I'm trying not to be a prick about it. But And, and he was cool, but uh, that was not cool. What yeah. he, he pointed a gun at me, man. Yeah. Uh, and everyone that's accidentally shot by a gun, it's always, ooh, it's unloaded. No, there's no such thing, man. You treat them all like they're loaded, even if you know they're not. Yeah. So that's one. Sometimes guys get too enamored with the EDC thing, and they're carrying around like a Batman tactical utility belt of guns and sticky blades and backups and all kinds of stuff. And uh, you feel like a hero, but ultimately it just gets too clunky, too uncomfortable, and uh, and it's not realistic, and people stop carrying. And so I'd rather you have like downsized into something manageable and something realistic uh, so that you'll carry more often. Yeah. So... Um, that's something. That's I'm glad you brought up the safety. No, I ask I ask that question a lot, and nobody ever brings up the safety, including myself. And mm. I mean, you're absolutely right. I see all the time. I see new noobs go to the gun store, and they're they're super worried about what gun they're going to get and what it looks like and what furniture they plan on putting on it, and they totally disregard safety and mm. training. Yeah. You know, and um, I'm glad you said that. That needed to be said. Uh, another thing is, is people are out to go try to buy their way into proficiency, and it just doesn't work. Of like, man, you, you can't. It's the Indian and not the arrow. And people think that they get this hottest, latest, greatest. Of like, Sean Ryan, Navy SEAL, carries this gun. And if I get that gun, I'm like Sean Ryan, you know. <laughs> Everyone wants to be a hero. Everyone wants to be you, bro. But guess what? You got to put in the time. You yeah. got to work. You got to learn. You got to practice. And so, man, getting some good training and practicing according to what you have learned. So training, you know, get trained and then practice that training of like, man, that's going to save you years of wasting ammo and chasing all these little upgrades that you thought was going to move the needle and it really didn't. And it really shows in our tactical training classes of just like in a few minutes, we can get folks over humps that they've been wrestling with for years. Yeah. And so, man, good training. Everyone everyone uh, realizes too late that they should have just made that investment right off the bat. Um, but what are you still training a lot? Not a lot, but I'm still training. And now Warrior Poets Society is training a lot. Okay. I'm training some. Okay. You know? What is the? What do you think the biggest hurdle is for people coming through your training as newbies, not advanced? What is the? What is the biggest mistake they made as far as is skills? So, if it's an introductory course, like for instance, the pistol one course, it's shot anticipation. That's why everyone's missing. You're anticipating the shot. You know the gun's about to go pop, and so you just clinch up right there and you're throwing shots down, and they don't realize it. And probably consciously, you could say, hey, you're doing this, and they don't even believe you. But they are. Uh, so it's that flinch. It's that subconscious uh, uh, response when you know that gun's about to go pop, uh, anticipating the shot overwhelmingly. Uh, and then as you get into more advanced courses, it, it, the commonality of what everyone does wrong just falls off. If people are doing all kinds of mistakes that they are not really cognizant of and you got to agree to each and every one but in a pistol one class that's what everyone's screwing up right on that's what i saw a lot back in in uh, my training days as well but for anybody wanting to up their skill game or learn about firearms how to protect themselves check out john at warriorpoetsociety.com hey thanks for that plug that was you're a good welcome. plug you're welcome that's solid let's get to the interview let's do it Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.